Howdy, this is Lem with Dorman Products, here to talk to you about PWM, or Pulse Width Modulation. Now if you're a mechanic, you don't know what PWM is, that's cool, but you should get familiar with it because it's used in all sorts of things today, lots of electronics, and a lot of those electronics are making their way onto vehicles. Effectively, pulse width modulation is simply presenting electrical power to a component using switching. Now in the old days, we may have just shot full voltage and power at something, and then if we needed to reduce power at the component, we'd use something like a resistor to maybe take some of that electrical energy and turn it into heat instead. There's only two problems with that. First, it's a little bit wasteful because you're using all that energy all the time. Secondly, it doesn't provide as precise control as you might want, and it also means that you have to design for a component that needs to be heated. But again, let's come back to that switching idea. Think about the thermostat in your home, right? It turns your heater on or off. We're constantly switching it. That's kind of how PWM works, just on a grander scale with some things. So the two components you need to be aware of are frequency and duty cycle. Frequency is how often we're turning on the switch, how many times per second that power gets switched on and switched off. Duty cycle is how long the switch stays on for. So for instance, if we were to throw the switch on and never turn it off, we'd be at 100% duty cycle. And if we never turned the switch on in the first place, we'd be at 0%. Obviously, just about everything you're gonna deal with is gonna be somewhere in between. So you need to be aware of frequency and duty cycle when you're discussing PWM. So you're gonna find PWM controlled uh, items all over a modern vehicle. You're finding it in lighting, fuel pumps, et cetera. Here we have a fan, right? And this is a great example right here. PWM works really well with either inertial loads or loads that don't take a super long time to react. So this fan is zipping around here and to your eye, it probably just appears to be rotating normally and that's what's happening. However, if you look at the LED on here, you can get an idea for both the frequency as well as the pulse width itself, the, the duty cycle we're exercising here. This is incredibly slow. Some switching happens thousands of times per second. Your eye cannot catch it at all. And we can actually show you an example of that. You'll note this thing is running what appears to be smoothly right now. Watch as I switch this jumper, however, you're gonna notice all of a sudden you can't even see that LED blinking anymore. It just appears to be solid. However, what we're doing is presenting a switched power to the fan, and now it's moving faster, but it's still not moving it wide open as though we were sending full current to this thing. So hopefully after having seen this, you have a little better understanding of what PWM is and how it can be harnessed and used in today's modern vehicles.